So in this video, I'll be explaining to you all just how Google managed to snatch the throne from OpenAI in terms of who is the king of AI. Now, currently, this all started a few days ago when Google announced their flagship model, VO2. And this is their generative text-to-video model that completely surpasses any other video model offerings. We can see here that this is something that is completely revolutionary and it is the first time that we see a video model that doesn't really hallucinate. It's able to get the physics, the hair, just simply manages to get everything working well, which is exactly what we would like to see from a video model. And this was the first time that we really got to take a look at where Google stands in terms of its core product offerings. So this was a clear wake up call for everyone in the AI industry because many people had thought that Google were actually behind. And when Google pulled out VO2, it actually showed us that, wait a minute, Google are actually quite ahead. Now, what's crazy about this is that it wasn't actually that long ago where OpenAI released Sora. And one of the people that is well known in the tech industry is Marcus Brownlee. Now, this person is a tech reviewer, so he reviews things all technology. And recently, we got to see him talk about Sora. Now, that was on December the 9th. He spoke about how the rumors are true. Sora's OpenAI video generator is here, launching for the public there was a large amount of hype around this software. And then only five to six days later on December the 16th, we got another tweet from that same influencer stating that, look, Google's new video generation model is called VO2. And if these handpicked examples are real, they look better than anything I've gotten out of Sora. Imagine having one of the most respected tech reviewers talk about your product and say it's better than anything you've ever seen. And not only in that week, OpenAI also released their video generator too, which is truly remarkable. Now, some of the demonstrations of these pieces of software were truly, truly incredible. We got to see how VO manages to slice its tomatoes with a very nice consistency. Whereas with Sora, we got to see a few mistakes and this wasn't the only time we got to see Sora's several mistakes. Unfortunately, it didn't seem like these were cherry picked examples. Across Twitter, what we did see was a continued sentiment that VO2 had actually surpassed Sora in basically all metrics. For example, right here from the Venture Twins, we can see that in this example, where someone is running over the hurdles, we can see that Sora doesn't manage to get this accurately at all. But when we take a look at Google's VO2, we can see that this is something that looks remarkably accurate in every way, shape or form. Now, it wasn't just VO2 that managed to surprise everyone. It was also the incredible Imogen Free. If you aren't familiar with what this is, this is another part of Google's offering. And this is essentially their image model, which is basically the highest quality text to image model that is currently available. When we take a look at the benchmarks, you can literally see here that if we take a look at any other image generator, and trust me, we've had so many in such a short space of time, Imagen 3 comes out as the leader in terms of the ELO rating on the leaderboard, meaning that there isn't a better image generation model that you can currently get your hands on, which is a remarkable feat considering we've had Mid Journey, we've got Dali 3, we had Stable Diffusion, and we had Flux 1.1. Simply incredible stuff from Google there. Now, it wasn't just the image generation. Google also decided to come out with their Gemini EXP 1206. Now, this is essentially Google's potentially going to be their Gemini 2 model. And currently, for the last two to three weeks, this has been the model that has ranked number one across the chatbot arena. Meaning that currently, when people use models in a blind test to where you look at two models side by side, overall, the model that gets picked in the majority of cases is Google Gemini's new model, which means that currently, OpenAI has been dethroned. Also, Claude seemingly has been dethroned. I know a lot of people use that model for various different things, but taking a look at the chatbot arena, it seems that people truly do prefer this model. Of course, brand names do have an effect on how you're going to view the model's outputs. But when we actually take a look at side by side in a blind viewing of the model's outputs, we can clearly see that Gemini is number one across the leaderboards. And not just that, when we actually also take a look at Gemini Flash, we can actually see that that model is right underneath there, even above O1 Preview and O1 Mini. So it seems that Google has managed to not only dominate the video, dominate the image, but also dominate the text generation. We can also see that in terms of these large language models, in the vision aspect of these models, we can also see that Gemini Flash and of course, the other Gemini experience models managed to top the vision areas as well. 
They manage to surpass anything Claude has and surpass anything coming out of ChatGPT, which is a remarkable feat considering the fact that I thought that Claude would have stayed at the top when it did come to the Visionary. Now, it wasn't just the Visionary, like I said before, it was of course lightweight models. In terms of the lightweight models that do exist, Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental is one that is just simply outstanding. When we take a look at these benchmarks, and yes, they aren't compared to other models, but Gemini 1.5 Flash was a pretty crazy model. And now that we've got this, which is just so much better than even Gemini 1.5 Pro, we know that Gemini 2.0 Flash is a model that exceeds nearly absolutely everything. And considering that this model is basically two slash three in the rankings, we shouldn't be surprised that this is the case. Now, it wasn't just the fact that we had a really cool LLM, we also had Google pull out the stops with their new AI agent demo Project Astra. If you aren't familiar with this, this is basically their dig at not, I wouldn't say open AI, but they want to be the leaders in terms of AI. And of course, one of the biggest things is having an AI assistant. Now, this is an AI assistant that uses Gemini 2.0 to essentially reason about the world in real time for users on the fly. And this is something that is an advanced AI assistant that allows you to become basically superhuman. You can use its camera to reason about where you need to go. You can use the maps feature. You can basically use it to do absolutely anything that you can do as a human. Of course, barring the physical world, but it will tell you anything that you need to know considering its vast database of knowledge and of course, its ability to ground that in the internet. It's really, truly amazing with as to how much people are probably gonna be using this in the future considering how embedded Google is when it comes to all of the products. You can see right here that this agent is able to use tool use, multiple reasoning to be able to achieve those goals. Now, like I said before, it wasn't just these agents. Of course, having an agent that is able to do different things around you around the world is really good. But what about physical devices? This is something that Google recently announced with their Android XR platform. It's Google's new operating system designed specifically for XR devices, including augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. And this is something that is completely incredible because it has Gemini built inside to the glasses that's basically going to allow you to seamlessly integrate AI into your lives and into your workflow. This is something that is probably going to be baked into all of Google's apps, it's going to be connected, and you're going to be seamlessly in the Google stack. And another thing is that they've opened this for Google developers or Android developers to start building on this. And if we know anything, developers are a sure creative bunch, which means that this is probably going to have a lot of cool stuff on there. So I can't imagine the kinds of experiences people are going to be building on this platform because this is probably going to be the future of AI. And I can say that as someone that has actively used an AI wearable product with the Meta glasses, except they don't have the full AI functionality. Now, of course, like I said before, it wasn't just physical products. Google decided to up their game one step further. They decided to integrate something called deep research. This is by far the most amazing tool as someone who uses the internet every day. You can look at the internet and get research, search across 100 different websites, and it will generate, you know, like a 10 page research journal about absolutely anything you want. And this is something that is up to date. It's something that is faster than you, something that is quicker than you. It is something that saves me hours and hours of time and simply beats one of the internet's beloved tools, perplexity. So something like this coming out of Google out of nowhere is honestly completely surprising because I'm not sure what I'm going to be using perplexity for. And of course, you have the small searches here and there, but this is going to be saving you hours of work on personal research. We also have the secret feature of data analysis now embedded into Google Gemini. This is something that once again, other LLMs don't even have. So now that this is baked into Google Gemini, I do wonder how many people are going to be using this incredible feature. Not only that, we also have Google add in memory. Remember the fact that you can have memory for OpenAI's ChatGPT. Now you can actually have that in Google Gemini and say, look, I need you guys to remember this. I need you guys to remember that. And it becomes more personalized overall. So when we take a look at absolutely everything that Google has managed to do this week alone, I think it's very clear that they are the leaders in terms of AI innovation and in terms of the AI space.